हेलो एवरीवन सो टुडेज वीडियो इज अबाउट अनिमिया सो वट आर वेरियस कॉजेज ऑफ अनिमिया द क्लासिफिकेशन एस्पेक्ट विच आर मोस्ट इम्पोर्टेंट एंड सम एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इन्वेस्टिगेशन एंड ट्रीटमेंट पार्ट राइट सो लेट एस गो थ्रू द वीडियो सो इन दिस वीडियो विल बी टॉकिंग अबाउट दीज टाइटल्स डेफिनेशन क्लासिफिकेशन देन कॉजेस इन्वेस्टिगेशन ट्रीटमेंट कमिंग टू डेफिनेशन फर्स्ट so anemia is a condition in which there is decreased hemoglobin concentration in blood below normal range and or or decreased rbc count leading to decreased oxygen carrying capacity so if we talk about definition of anemia it's not only decreased hemoglobin concentration in fact there are various condition in which hemoglobin concentration is normal instead there is decreased rbc count but ultimately leading to decreased oxygen carrying capacity that is anemia right now let us see the classification of anemia now anemias can be divided by two aspects one is depending on cause and one is depending on morphology depending on cause either because of blood loss or inadequate production of rbcs or excessive destruction of cells right this way we will be dividing it we'll see uh, which type of anemia comes under these heading in next slide so on basis of morphology the anemia can be normocytic microcytic and macrocytic we'll see in detail this classification so let us start first depending on cause in when we talk about depending on causes the anemias can be classified uh, by three headings so first is deficiency anemias so we are having some nutritional deficiency which is basically cause of anemia right if we if we just write the name of anemias which type of anemias comes under this heading are iron deficiency anemia so because of deficiency of iron pernicious anemia because of b2 megaloblastic anemia megaloblastic anemia which can be because of folic acid deficiency or even b12 okay aplastic anemia can be made a separate heading but aplastic anemia can be because of deficiencies or can be because of bone marrow dis, uh, some abnormalities related to bone marrow right so this is all about deficiency anemias blood loss when we talk about because of any trauma because of some coagulation disorders right there are various mechanisms which uh, which basically prevent clotting uh, prevent bleeding from our body the clotting mechanism the platelets right so some abnormality related to those mechanisms can lead to blood loss or accidental trauma so they comes under hemorrhagic anemia then is hemolytic anemia so hemolytic anemia is the anemia production is there but they are being destructed by some cells so increased destruction this the anemia come under these heading uh, are thalassemias alpha beta thalassemia so abnormal production of cells sickle cell anemia sickle shaped rbcs are produced and hence thereby they all when blood passes through spleen they will be lysed they will be destructed splenomegaly spleen which acts as Uh, a mechanism to basically destruct all the abnormal cells if splenomegaly occur then destruction increases okay there are various diseases there are various acute and chronic diseases most important are chronic diseases which basically are cause of anemia here we are talking about disease of uh, like blood borne disease so the for example malaria parasite uh, in which uh, rbcs are involved directly right so those are bcs are defective and they will be lysed by spleen okay there are various chronic diseases uh, or other also related to gut or other than gut which can cause anemias fine so next is morphology classification to understand morphological classification of anemia we should know what is this morphology about uh, here we are talking about obviously rbc morphology and among this uh, we actually need uh, introduction of blood indices so let us see what these blood indices are okay there are three blood indices which are very important one first is mcv that is mean corpuscular volume it's the average volume of rbc in total packed cell volume right so how much average volume of rbc is present in all over pcv packed cell volume basically packed cell volume is the percentage of cellular component of total blood if we allow a blood to stand for around 10 to 15 minute around 45% is plasma and 55% cells which basically settle down are pcv packed cell volume 
so in that pegged cell volume what is the average volume of rbc is mcv right then is mch mean corpuscular hemoglobin which is the average hemoglobin per rbc so the average if we say average one rbc how much hemoglobin is present in one rbc that is mch okay next is mchc mean corpuscular hemoglobin concentration it is the average concentration of hemoglobin but in total packed cell volume okay this is the difference between mch and mchc fine okay now let's see how the anemia can be classified because of uh, depending on these indices right so here anemia can be divided in for example as you can see in the image there is hyperchromic normochromic and downward it's hypochromic right chrome means color as it's visible that brightness is decreasing downward right hyperchromic is basically when hemoglobin concentration is more than normal normochromic is the normal hemoglobin concentration as per mchc right so mchc value less than normal is hypochromic fine so this is all about hemoglobin concentration in rbc right if we go laterally the size is reducing obviously macrocytic large size thomocytic normal size and microcytic less than normal size okay so this way we can classify anemia as you can see the topmost if we have to classify this cell that it will be hyperchromic macrocytic right if you have to classify this cell then it will be hypochromic microcytic and this is normochromic normocytic this way the blood picture of patients are being classified in respective category of anemia okay so let us see types of anemia depending on these so first is normochromic normocytic anemia so blood cells are normal hemoglobin concentration is also normal this the anemia types can be hemolytic anemia okay and acute hemorrhage because of any trauma because of any uh, bleeding so uh, it is because of trauma so hemorrhagic anemia aplastic anemia can come under this heading but there are various uh, situations in which aplastic anemia is like because of bone marrow uh, abnormalities the cells can be abnormal in the blood so may be or may not be aplastic anemia comes under this category now next is hypochromic microcytic anemia hypochromic means hb concentration is less microcytic mean rbcs are also less in size so anemia in this category is are iron deficiency anemia thalassemia and because of chronic disease now if you see chronic disease can come under normal condition also and this condition also when everything is less okay so it can hamper depending on the condition now next is normochromic uh, or macrocytic anemia normochromic mean the hb concentration is normal as you can notice here that it's it should be hyperchromic otherwise but it's normochromic because rbc cannot contain a higher concentration of hemoglobin than normal okay so normochromic macrocytic anemia the types are deficiency in mean b12 deficiency and folate deficiency so megaloblastic and pernicious anemia comes under this category because when b12 and folic acid are not sufficient in bone marrow during erythropoiesis rbc synthesis then the megaloblast this is called megaloblastic anemia so megaloblast the immature cells comes directly in periphery so large in size immature cells are present in blood that category is macrocytic anemia okay so this is all about types or we can say classification of anemia depending on cause and depending on morphology so risk factor of anemia if we see it can be poor socio economic condition which is basically causing the deficiency anemia is most important right there are multiple pregnancies can be caused when nutrition is not properly followed right teenage pregnancy or menstrual problems severe more bleeding disorders are present so which can lead to anemia if nutrition uh, is not taken care of right coming to causes of anemia now if you see classification we can have a estimate what are the causes of anemia right but to perform in an exam the the answer should be uh, explained in these four categories so one is increased requirement right menstruating females have more iron need right this way 
it increase requirement so pregnancy obviously it's most important during pregnancy there are all growth factors all all nutrition everything is needed you know to for growth of fetus right lactation during lactation the need is more especially during growing children the need is more right and erythropoietin treatment because erythropoietin is a hormone which basically stimulate erythropoiesis in bone marrow right so when when erythropoiesis is being stimulated the need is increased for different nutrients right so that rbc can be synthesized fine so that's why increased requirement can be a cause of anemia whenever there is increased requirement and supply is not sufficient right second category is increased loss during gi bleeding there are various disorders like ulcerative colitis crohn disease there are various gi uh, disorders gastrointestinal disorders where bleeding can occur and even the clotting factor mechanisms are not working then bleeding can occur if platelet deficiency for example dengue fever then bleeding can occur right it can be anything menorrhagia bleeding is more in menorrhagia right persistent hematuria because of any region because of any kidney disorders there is persistent rbc loss in urine okay intravascular hemolytic anemias for example spleen is causing hemolysis regular blood donors and uh, parasitic infections okay so increased loss then is decrease intake we are taking less for example vegetarian diet socio economic factors are very important when the the intake is less obviously they can't afford that and vegetarian diet uh, i have written here because the vegetarian diet is basically uh, they are the veg people they are taking less protein right because non veg people have high protein intake but veg people have dal and all which is having very less distribution in family so very less intake of protein coming to decrease absorption which is also important there are various gi pathologies uh, because of that there is no absorption of any nutrient occurring that there is totally loss of whatever we eat fine for example celiac disease in which there is allergy to gluten so because of that diarrhea occur if we eat gluten so uh, absorption is decreased right crohn disease is also having severe diarrhea so same situation coming to gastrectomy so gastrectomy because stomach is needed when the ferric form of iron what we uh, what we get in food is to be converted in a ferrous form fe2 positive to be absorbed in gut so that's why stomach is also important but if stomach is removed gastrectomy is done then obviously absorption is hampered there are medications which also do the same antacids which prevent hcl which convert ferric into ferrous form so that's how decrease absorption affect and it can become a cause of anemia fine so under these four categories we will be classifying cause fine now how the symptom how basically patient complain about so uh, he will be complaining fatigue loss of energy whole day uh, and during exercise he will be feeling rapid heart rate rapid uh, respiratory rate difficulty in concentrating and uh, uh, dizziness fine pale skin leg cramps insomnia this uh, he'll be complaining and will be observing the nails will be brittle colinokia signs spoon shaped nail we can see right atrophy of papilla of tongue so disturbed taste angular stomatitis brittle hair and dysphagia and glossitis these symptoms these signs we can see fine now we can investigate for uh, packed cell volume the total cells count because of any infection this can be increased okay uh, so hemoglobin concentration will be less in uh, anemia most of the anemia not all cbc uh, because uh, to rule out first is rbc count whether it's less or not and second thing is for leukocytes because if any infection is there or not right to rule out the cause then uh, all the blood indices as i explained mcv mch and mchc serum ferritin to uh, to basically diagnose iron deficiency anemia total iron binding capacity and for any disease or blood loss all the investigation should be done right coming to treatment so uh, if you talk about anemia the treatment depends on the cause obviously if there is iron deficiency anemia we can't actually give vitamin b right and folic acid so depending on cause we have to treat the anemia iron deficiency anemia have specific treatment pernicious anemia have its specific treatment if the cause is gut disorder then we have to treat this way hemolytic anemia if we have then we have to treat this way or spleen to be removed right if chronic infection is a cause obviously we have to treat that fine 
and along with that we have to focus on nutritional therapy that is obviously important okay so depending on the classification we have discussed the course and the treatment varies fine so for example iron deficiency anemia this is most important question being asked to all paramedical and medical students so if we say cause of anemia then obviously intake and causes will be same under all those four headings if we have to diagnose along with all investigations we explained serum iron serum ferritin total iron bending capacity of iron they should be assessed okay apart from that treatment in treatment we will be having obviously iron supplements okay and all the diet which have iron rich food this way will be performing if a uh, iron deficiency anemia question is asked okay so just focusing on classification we can perform every type of anemia if asked so this is all about anemia so thanks for watching this video if you have any query you can actually question in email id given and you can subscribe to my channel if you like thank you so much thank you so much